my name is Alexis Durant, and I spent four consecutive years at Sapperson College, and that's where I earned three associates, an AA in General Studies, an AA in English Literature, an AS in Television Technology. I then transferred to UC Santa Cruz, and I got my Bachelor of Arts in Film and Digital Media. And after a two-year break, I went to SDSU, and I earned my Master of Fine Arts in Film and Television Production. My name is Jesus Rualcaba, and I went to Hartnell College, um, got my Associates of Arts degree in Multimedia, and then I went to CSU Monterey Bay, where I got my Bachelor's of Science in uh, Print Publication Design, and then I got my MFA from Academy of Art University in San Francisco. So initially, while attending Salveson College, I was an English Literature major, and I took a humanities course called History of Film as Art, which is still being offered to this day just across the hall. And in that class, at some point during those eight weeks, I saw a very instrumental film called Hearts of Darkness, A Filmmaker's Apocalypse. It's the making of Apocalypse Now. And this is 2010, YouTube was four or five years in. There's not much content on YouTube within the behind the scenes of filmmaking videos. I was mesmerized, I was blown away, and I was scared, but I knew I wanted to endeavor and pursue that industry. So again, I was an English literature major. I was getting some really good feedback in my writing. I had recently discovered screenwriting. So those two things just kind of merged that same semester. And then I found out there was a film department just across the hall. Growing up, I've always liked like drawing and painting. And that's actually where like a lot of my passion comes from. But it wasn't until I got to Hartnell College um, where I had to take like an intro to computers like class. That's where I learned Photoshop for the first time. And when I saw what Photoshop could do, I just like fell in love with it. And I, I was like blown away. I just saw like another tool that you could do like digital art. When, when I took that course and I got familiar with Photoshop and, and graphic design, it just completely like changed my my course of what I wanted to do and I just focused on that. I was working at NBC San Diego as a studio operations technician and someone in, in my department had told me that SDSU was revamping their program from a two-year Master of Arts to a three-year Master of Fine Arts. And in the process of doing research, I found out that within the CSU system, there was a grant called the State University Grant and I felt that I was eligible for it. So I did contact FAFSA and SDSU and that's what really led me to pursue my master's. At the same time, I always knew I wanted to be an educator. When I was a student here at Southwestern, I looked up to three professors of mine, so I knew at some point in my career I wanted to pursue a career as an educator. So while working at NBC, I realized, hey, I can get this grant, all of it can be paid for, and you know, a MFA is very enticing, it can help me teach at some point, and that's what led me to applying. I was probably already like 15 years into my career when I decided to go back to school. You know, I have kids, and so for me it was important for them to kind of see that, you know, I'm not just telling them that education is important, you know, I'm also kind of showing them. So like they saw me go through, you know, that educational process. I always knew I wanted to teach at the college level, and in order to do that you had to get your master's. At this point I have worked for like big corporate companies. There's not much uh, creative freedom, and so I needed like a creative you know, outlet outside of what I was doing in my day to day. And I was going through that kind of like creative rut at the moment. Um, I thought, well, might as well go back to school right now. Currently, I'm an adjunct professor at two schools, Southwestern College and Miramar College. And I'm also an active freelance filmmaker. In terms of my freelance filmmaking, I work a lot as a director and as a camera operator. So in one space, I work in reality TV docuseries. And another space that I work heavily in is in the short form, short documentaries, VJ. And we do these like eight to 50 minute, you know, stories kind of in the video journalism, short documentary. Here at Southwestern, I teach two classes. One of the classes that I teach is editing, where we edit four projects and they learn how to edit projects. My production class, they essentially learn how to make short movies and documentaries. And at Miramar College, we teach film studies, where we just show how to appreciate films and how to be an active viewer in dissecting films and storytelling. My title is owner and creative director of Paper Toggles Greeting Cards. There's two parts, right? So there's the owner part, so there's the business side. I have to market my business. I have to, you know, keep track of finances. I have to do my own sales. 
Um, so all of that, you know, business side of it is definitely there. That's the owner part. In terms of the creative direction, I still design, you know, the greeting cards that I produce. So brainstorming ideas, collaborating with other artists, making my own sketches, working in digital formats, working with printers. Um, it's, it's all things that are kind of involved with what I do day to day. My last year of graduate school, I received a text message from a former professor, not a colleague. His name is Professor Mark Sasson. He sent me a text the first week of January of 2019. And he said, hey, Alexis, I know you're around San Diego. You've been you know, pretty active, staying in touch with the school. We have an opening. If you'd you know, like to apply, um, it'd be great if you can do it. And that's how I got this job. My first job was at a print publication company um, designing uh, catalogs. From there, I went on to Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Really gave me a new perspective into design that I didn't have before. So all of that experience from 20 years of my career, I don't feel like I'm starting like way from the bottom. I'm bringing all of that experience with me. And although I really enjoy, you know, working for tech and you know the money that that came with all of that and the benefits, I felt that there there's potential for something bigger. So I made the decision. I talked to my family. I let them know what was going to happen. I felt that there was something bigger that could happen with Paper Tacos. While I was a student here at Southwestern, I was approached by a professor counselor named David Ramirez, and he was recruiting people for this pilot program called Transfer Institute, Institute TI. At some point, we took a trip to Northern California. For me, getting to travel with a nice cohort of students and visiting these schools and just kind of opening the possibility of transferring and pursuing your education was eye-opening for me. But while I was in high school, I got introduced to a program called Educational Talent Search. And um, Educational Talent Search, you know, I had the guidance of their counselors to really help me understand like the A3G requirements, um, which is, you know, coming from first generation, my parents, all they wanted was for me to like, hey, do, do good in school, graduate, and that's it. But beyond that, I didn't know what was possible. And it wasn't until I started talking with those counselors from like ETS, Educational Town Search, to, to kind of help, help me explain that, hey, you know, it seems like you like drawing and painting, like there's, you know, you can make that into a job, a career. So apart from, you know, doing, you know, paper tacos uh, full time now, I, I do teach at the local university, CSU Monterey Bay. Just being able to tell my story in class and have students from you know, Monterey County, which is where I grew up, um, is very rewarding for me you know, to be in the classroom, be able to share my story and have students that you know, grew up with the same, same environment that I did. There's always been like a place in my heart for you know, these outreach programs just because they helped me so much when I was like in high school and kind of going through things and allow me to see my possibilities that you know i feel i feel like i should be able to to do that as well and 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 give back somehow so outreach has always been a part of uh of my career as well you have to build relationships and sustain them and nurture them because and i mean both with your peers and with your professors because those are the ones that are going to get you jobs and vice versa you know if you uh have good relationships with your with your fellow peers you know a year later Four years later, they're going to give you a call. If you were fun to work with, you were easygoing and a good person on set, they're going to think about you. They're going to call you up and get you your next gig. And same with the professor, whether it's a mentor, a letter of recommendation, or even employment. In my case, it's crucial that you sustain and nurture healthy relationships with the people in this industry, with anyone. Design is about designing for other people and not yourself. So. A lot of times, um, as a creative person, you want to put your own creative touch and you know your own style and your own creative ideas. But at the end of the day, you have a client that you're designing for, so you need to be able to listen to what their needs are. Make that distinguish or, or understanding that you're not designing for yourself, but you're designing for others. Yes, your creative process and your creative outlet is super important, but at the end of the day, you need to be able to understand, you know, the users of the product or the client that you're working for. During my last year uh, at Santa Cruz, I decided to study abroad and I actually had a fight with the school a little bit because I had already graduated, but I wanted to get that experience. So I actually went to Thailand for a semester in the fall of 2014. Now, upon returning to San Diego, 
it finally hit me, it dawned on me that I'm done with school. I didn't have plans for a master's or a PhD. I wouldn't say I was lost, but I was getting a little nervous as far as what am I gonna do? Am I gonna move to LA? Am I gonna start freelancing? How do I start, you know, navigating that journey? And within a month of coming back from Thailand, you know, I got this job at NBC. So in a way I wanna say it saved me and it gave me some room to just work in the industry, make some connections, uh, work with some great equipment and kind of figure out what my next step would be, which was going to graduate school and continuing building my freelance uh, business. Try not to do everything yourself. Um, entrepreneurship is very difficult uh, if you try to do it on your own. So try to establish a network of people that could help you in the areas that you don't understand. So like myself, I'm very good in the creative side of it, but the business side, like I'm still learning a lot of stuff. So I need to reach out to people, you know, accountants, lawyers, and, and all these other people that need to help me to, so that I could be successful on that side of the house as well. And so like building all these connections with people and um, being open to taking criticism or taking advice is um, something that I'm really grateful for because all of those little, you know, moments with the different people I ran into in my career, it, I could feel like, you know, that that everything that I learned from them is things that I'm incorporating today with, with my own personal business.